Hi, this is Klaus Allman. I'm a field application scientist in the Boston area with Illumina. This is Module 4, Working with the Data of the GA Bootcamp Material. Data analysis represents the fourth of four modules within the basic sequencing workflow on the Genome Analyzer. Although the analysis of sequencing data can be extensive, we'll focus today on the primary aspects of data analysis from the GA to downstream analysis using the pipeline software package. The general goal at the data analysis step is to take the raw data in the form of images or intensities and turn them into sequencing reads later used for alignment or other downstream applications. As part of the data analysis, Illumina provides a number of software packages, including real-time analysis, pipeline, and cassava. In addition, we also have Genome Studio, which allows for the visualization of your results post the run. To better understand where things occur, the following slide underlines some of the data analysis workflows in terms of the outputs, the pipeline names or operating systems for which the GA, the SCS and RTA, or the pipeline server operate. In the case of the Genome Analyzer, its output is raw images in the form of TIFF files and runs on a Windows operating system. The software packages of SCS and RTA output both intensities and base calls and also run on the Windows operating system. The pipeline server package produces an output of alignments. This is currently available only for a Linux operating system. The real-time analysis module resides on the GA's attached PC and performs primary image analysis as well as generation of cluster intensities. Based on the resulting data, both base calls and FRED-like quality scores are assigned. RTA vastly improves the data management process as the primary analysis stuff is done during the run in order to front load a lot of the analysis tasks. Ultimately, this reduces a lot of the downstream processes that used to be done on large clusters. One of the additional advantages of RTA is to provide real-time system performance. Some of the metrics of the run, including intensities, quality scores, and focus metrics, can be achieved while the run is in progress in order to determine the quality of the run overall. The following is an example of a run folder structure produced on a GA. It contains both the lane-specific information as well as the cycle-specific information that is eventually transferred to the network location. One of the initial tasks of the primary analysis is to develop the cluster locations based upon the raw TIFF images developed from the GA. The software translates peaks of intensity against a background into a table, as you see here on the slide, in order to determine the overall intensities for each base at each cluster location throughout the run. This module is called Firecrest and exists both within the RTA as well as the complementary section of the pipeline software package. The second module within the primary analysis is called Bustard. Bustard uses the intensity files as an input and generates the sequencing files as an output. The algorithms within Bustard translate the intensity metrics into base calls for each of the cycles at each read along the flow cell. Within Bustard, a number of additional tasks are performed. Of these include crosstalk correction and normalization. The crosstalk correction tries to account for any signal overlap that happens between some of the different bases. Some of the dyes that are used within the chemistry have very similar wavelengths and can often bleed over between channels. Besides crosstalk, there is also a normalization for the maximum intensity differences between each of the dyes. Bustard also tries to make a correction based on the phasing or pre-phasing that happens within chemistry. Due to minor inefficiencies in the chemistry, it's possible for a small number of molecules that make up a cluster to be either a base ahead or a base behind the current incorporation cycle. These molecules that are out of phase with the majority of the molecules in a cluster can account for an additional signal. The software uses a number of algorithms to correct for this phasing or pre-phasing signal from contributing to the majority. Lastly, Bustard attempts to call the correct base given the intensities from each of the bases contributing. It chooses the highest signal of the four bases, as you can see from the example below. In this case, 
Although there were four intensities provided, one from each base, the C base had clearly the highest intensity even after all of the normalization tools have been applied. Now that we've had a chance to discuss the modules that make up the primary analysis, including Firecrest and Bustard, let's focus on the remaining portion of data analysis workflow. This includes the segment of the pipeline server, or in the module called Gerald, which performs the alignments. As we saw before, the pipeline server package, which contains the Gerald module, is currently only available for the Linux operating system. The Gerald module performs the alignments and some basic filtering of the sequencing output. Gerald takes the sequencing files produced by either RTA or Bustard as an input and produces a folder structure and output files along with some summary metrics of the run. As part of the output, a number of intensity plots are generated. These plots can be extremely useful in determining the quality of the samples, the chemistry, and the equipment throughout the run cycles. As part of the Gerald module, some initial filtering occurs in order to highlight the highest quality sequencing reads. Within the software is a chastity filter. This filter looks at the ratio of the highest intensity to the sum of the first and second highest intensity as shown in the example. During processing, an ideal chastity filter of 0.6 is used to determine which of the reads is the highest quality. It's important to note that the software does not discard the reads that do not pass the chastity filter. A column within the QSeq files indicates which reads pass the filter and which reads do not pass the filter by a 1 or 0 designation. The aligned output data from Gerald can be passed to further downstream applications, such as Cassava, which aggregates runs for multiple flow cells, calls SNPs, counts indices in the case of tagged base applications, or produces Genome Studio Ready build data. An additional product within the Illumina software suite is that of Genome Studio. Genome Studio can be used to visualize the resulting sequences from the aligned output data. Within Genome Studio, the sequence data can be combined with data from any of our array-based products to enhance the experiment or the overall output of the sequence information. There are many other downstream applications from third parties which can utilize the data produced by either RTA or the pipeline software. This can include assemblers, SNP callers, data analysis, and visualization tools. The output of these products can be used for a myriad of other applications. As you can see from the example text file below, besides the standard read and quality information from each of the clusters, other information includes the instrument name, the lane, the location of the tile, the aligned locus, and strand designation to which it's aligned. Illumina's Genome Studio software is a very powerful tool that can be used to integrate the analysis of both microarray and sequencing-based platforms. It currently has the capabilities to analyze genomics data from both DNA, RNA, as well as chip-based sequencing experiments. We anticipate that as the platforms develop, so too will the software to incorporate more features and more tools for combining the analysis of both the sequencing and array-based products. Genome Studio is broken down into a number of different modules which can be purchased or used separately. On the ArrayBase side, there's genotyping, gene expression, methylation, as well as protein analysis. On the sequencing side, there are three modules which include DNA, RNA, and chip sequencing. For each of these modules, there are separate visualization as well as filtering, reporting, and output tools which help to organize the data. The following slide is an example of one of the Genome Studio tables when looking at some DNA sequencing output. The sequencing tab is very similar to the output of that of Gerald. There are additional tabs which help to arrange the data in terms of samples, lanes, or alleles when trying to look for biological based information. As is the case with many aspects of the sequencing workflow, there are a number of best practices specifically for data analysis. A number of these have been highlighted on the slide below and may be used to ensure the efficiency of your facility's data handling. The first of these is the use of a positive control with each flow cell. 
Illumina recommends the use of a Phi-X control lane to ensure run performance as well as the correct calculations of both matrix and phasing. As our software has continued to improve, the use or saving of images is no longer necessary. However, a subset of images can be saved to assist in troubleshooting should anything go wrong both chemically or by the instrumentation. It's also important to maintain a chastity value of 0.6. This has been experimentally found to have a good balance when comparing the two highest base signals. Although increasing the chastity value is more stringent, it could produce a smaller pass filter number having higher base quality values. Separately to the parameters of analysis, there's some good practices in terms of running each of the command lines. One of these includes the use of the nohup command with each of the makes that are being run as part of the analysis tools. Use of this nohup command allows for the capturing of the command line output to a separate text file which can later be used for troubleshooting. Lastly, it's important to maintain the run folder structures both on the GA as well as on your network storage location. Any deviation from the standard run folder structure could have implications for some of the downstream analysis tools. Many of the downstream analysis scripts as part of pipeline assume a certain directory structure. If this directory structure has been changed or moved, errors will occur in the output indicating which files cannot be found. The analysis of next generation sequencing data can be hard no matter how large or small the facility. It's important to identify the best practices that make most sense to your facility or your analysis team in order to achieve the best results.